Hello everyone and it's good to have you back at Zilliqa Zebra. Are you confused about what GZIL is and what you can do with it? Do you want to find out more about the purpose of GZIL? Let Zilliqa Zebra help answer your burning questions about GZIL now. In this video, you will learn what is GZIL and how it came into being. You also learn about the Decentralized Autonomous Organization or DAO for short and what purpose does it serve. Find out how to earn and accumulate GZIL and what else you can do with this token. I will also share with you how you can use a real-time calculator to help plan and strategize your staking to get the most GZILs. Last but not least, I will share with you where else you can buy, sell or trade GZIL. And as always, if you find this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe to Zilliqa Zebra for more useful news, updates and guides on all things Zilliqa. I'm pretty new to this and I'm doing my best to try to add more videos, so don't forget to support me. GZIL is essentially a governance token, which empowers long-term token holders and frequent engagers to become a decision maker in the Zilliqa ecosystem. This can be compared to a DAO-like structure, where GZ holders can vote and make decisions on community and partner projects powered by Zilliqa. What is GZIL? GZIL are ZRC2 compliant fungible tokens that can be earned alongside ZIL staking rewards. GZIL will only be issued when a user withdraws his or her staking rewards from the designated SSN operator. For every 1000 ZIL earned as a staking reward, one GZIL will be issued. The rationale behind issuing GZIL is to capture long-term token holders and to give them access to governance tokens that they can later use to make ecosystem-wide decisions. For example, in a DOO-like structure, ZIL, or rather, GZIL holders can vote and make decisions on community projects. What is a Decentralized Autonomous Organization, or DAO? One of the major features of digital currencies is that they are decentralized. This means that they are not controlled by a single institution, like a government or a central bank, but instead are divided amongst a variety of computers, networks, or even nodes. The DAO has an objective to provide a new decentralized business model for organizing both commercial and non-profit enterprises. In the DAO, each action or vote is represented by some form of transaction in the blockchain. Here, the members are represented by the address in Ethereum is the Ethereum address. These addresses can be owned by a human, a robot, or even an IoT device, or even another DAO. This makes it very ideal for a fully automated system to run the full-fledged organization. So, how does the DAO work? Each member is given a token, which represents the shares of the DAO. These tokens can then be also used to vote in the DAO to take a certain decision. The token is nothing but another kind of contract signing on top of blockchain. The more token an address has, the more control he will have on the DAO. Each member will have the rights to submit the proposal to take certain decisions. These decisions can be to fire the CEO or just change the CEO, to hire a vendor to get his or her services, to hire a lawyer, to pay certain US dollars or ethers to someone as a salary or bonus, or to issue the share to someone because that person or address is adding more value. In the DAO, since this is nothing but a democracy which is running in the blockchain, the voting power can be optionally delegated to someone to whom a member trusts more. This is in fact voting by proxy in the real organization. It can also raise funds through some crowdsource funding by issuing the tokens or shares to anyone who is paying the money to them. This payment and issuing of the shares or token can be done in real time, unlike the more than 60 days process in the real organization. GZILs will be used for broader ecosystem governance. This will help create a DAO-like structure through which GZIL holders can invest in community projects with the longer-term goal of moving all ecosystem funding to the DAO and then 
empowering the community to be a decision makers of the funded projects. The community holding the GZOs will then be able to vote on proposals alongside Zilliqa research on making decisions. Now, it is important to note that GZOs will only be issued for one year, starting from the launch of the non-custodial ZIL staking, which started on 14 October 2020. This is with the objective of creating scarcity and to incentivize users to get involved in the staking program early. The maximum number of GZOs ever to be issued will be limited at 722,700. Now, GZO will only be issued when a user withdraws his or her ZIL staking rewards from the designated SSN operator. For every 1,000 ZILs earned as a staking reward, one GZO will be issued. Aside from holding GZOs for governance purposes, users can also swap GZO for other ZRC2 tokens on the DEX centralized exchange ZIL swap or contribute to its liquidity pool in return for rewards. Now, as of 18 February 2021, one GZO is worth roughly about 116 US dollars, so you can tell that it's pretty valuable. In fact, if you are planning to do some serious Zilliqa staking, you might want to check out the real-time staking calculator at My Zilliqa Wallet. I find this to be a very useful tool, which takes into consideration your potential GZO earnings. It then calculates the estimated annual returns, factoring the returns from GZO. In fact, using this example you can see on this, if you invest 100,000 ZILs at 14.2 APY, you should get an estimated annual return, including GZOs, of 3,372 US dollars with an estimated actual APY of 26%, which is really fantastic. With lots of great projects coming up, you are not only capturing the yield from staking, but also the price appreciation of Zilliqa itself. You can buy, sell, or trade GZIL at various crypto exchanges, such as Binance, KuCoin, UOB, so on and so forth. Alternatively, Users can also swap GZIL for other ZRC2 tokens via the decentralized exchange ZIL swap or contribute to its liquidity pools in return for rewards. I hope this video helps to answer some questions with regard to GZIL. If you are looking for some assistance on any topics related to Zilliqa, feel free to drop me an email at zilliqazebra at gmail.com and I will do my best to create an educational video around that topic. Bye for now.